Good day, everybody. Hey, could I ask that everyone puts the balloons down? We can't start until the balloons are down. Thanks very much. Look at up here, on stage. What a proper deadly mob we got up here, eh? Do they look deadly or what? Can I hear a shout from all the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders? That's what I was hoping for. Tonight, we're going to have a little talk with Sabrina, Chanel, Tamsin, and Marakai. And I want to start with a little quote from Pope St. John Paul II when he came to Alice Springs, yeah, in 1986. He addressed Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. He told them how precious they were in God's sight and their mission for the church in Australia. And these are some of the things he said. I've got to read it, because I'm quoting the Pope. I can't make this one up. <laughs> As you listen to the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, seek out the best things of your traditional ways. Your Christian faith calls you to become the best kind of Aboriginal people you can be. And the church herself in Australia will not be fully the church that Jesus wants her to be until you have made your contribution to her life and until that contribution has been joyfully received by others. How cool is that? So we're now going to hear from these great young people how the Holy Spirit has been experienced in their lives as young Aboriginal people and how the Holy Spirit has helped them get through the difficult times and also the good times to look into the future. Sabrina, over to you. Hi everyone, my name is Sabrina and I'm from the Cairns Diocese. Yeah, yeah. Queensland. Yeah. And I sit on the Natsik Council as the National Youth Councillor. <laughs> um, I guess my role with Natsik allows me to be exposed to witnessing the Holy Spirit moving within our young Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Catholic young people. That has been the most rewarding thing for me. And even though the Holy Spirit works within my life, I feel that he's there with me most when I'm with the young people. That's cool, Sabrina. <laughs> Sabrina is a great example to all young people. So thank you for what you do, mate. You do an excellent job. Right. Chanel, over to you. Hi, my name is Chanel O'Reary. I'm from the Broome Diocese. Yay! I'm a proud 
Nyonyol and Ngaranyan women. And I'm just, I wanted to talk tonight about culture and faith and how it's tied together. As you may know or you may not, the Kimberley has the most highest rate in suicide in the whole world. A lot of our people, our young people, are taking their life. Life is precious. We should embrace it. We should empower each other and love each other. What do we do about that? I think we need to connect to country, to faith, and look at our spirituality. We don't want to see no more people, no more of my mob taking our lives. Yeah. I sit here with a heavy heart because of that. But then on the other hand, I sit here with a strong heart, with happiness, because of all my Kimberley mob and how much youth came along to this. We as indigenous people, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders, need to empower each other and to be there and love one another. Remember, faith and culture retire as one. Thanks. Thanks so much, Chanel. Tamsin, over to you. So I'm Tamsin. I'm a Yari Mbadi woman from Bremen up the Dampier Peninsula. So growing up, I've been quite lucky because I've had, I've grown up with a loving, supportive and functional family and I've received a lot of help growing up. But I've also faced a lot of struggles, but with each struggle came a success. When I was 10 years old, I fell really ill and I was taken out of school. And being a 10 year old, I got bored really easily so I went up to my mother and asked, Mum, I'm bored, what can I do? She said, write a book. And so I wrote a book and now I'm a published author. Yeah. Um, at the age of 15, one of my good friends committed suicide. Um, with that, I faced a lot of like I had to deal with a lot of grief, a lot of depression. I went into a really dark place, but I got out of that. I seeked help. I talked to my friends, family, and other people to help me get out of that place. And I think with a lot of young Aboriginal kids is that they struggle to get out of that dark place because of shame. But I came over that and now I'm happy again. And I just want to let everyone know that there's no shame in expressing your feelings and what you're dealing with, because once you come out of that, you'll be free again. That's brilliant. Thank you so much, Ken. Marikai, over to you, mate. That's brilliant. Hey, so my name is Marikai. I'm a proud Nungadi man, and I'm from the Lismore Diocese. Um, so I want to talk about uh, an issue that I've faced in my life, being Aboriginal, um, and it's the fact that, well, I don't exactly look like your stereotypical Aboriginal person. I don't have that dark skin, um, and that's played a very large role in my life because when I talk to people, when I say, oh, yeah, like, I'm a black person, like, I'm Aboriginal, they'll go, what? No. You can't be Aboriginal, you're like one of the whitest people I know. <laughs> yeah, it comes off as a funny joke, but um, the thing is that when that comes from someone that you really respect and love and look up to as a person, 
it cuts you deep because that's a part of my identity. I've always been raised up to be proud of the fact that I'm Aboriginal and then I'm having someone just cut me down for it. So um, I did actually end up having some identity issues and not knowing who I was as a person because a part of me that's always been a part of me was being ripped away. So I had to find how I was really myself and my faith was actually a really strong part in that because I had my faith at this time um, and it sort of grounded me, kept me in the one spot because even though the fact that I was, or I was Aboriginal had been sort of taken away from me, which I thought couldn't be done, my faith was something that couldn't be done and through my faith I was able to eventually find that my identity is not what other people are thinking about me, not how I am perceived by others, it's what I think about myself, what I know about myself, how I know it, and for me, it was knowing my family, knowing where I'm Aboriginal, how I'm Aboriginal, and my people, my land, and my home. Mate, that is so good. That is so good. You guys, by what you're just doing tonight, fulfilling what Pope St. John Paul II said, you're making your contribution. And that's fantastic. And I would like to just say to you, because that's really hard what you did and sharing that sort of stuff, because it's very personal and it's very painful. And for all the other young people out here, remember that when you're here, we all share the same Holy Spirit. We are all brothers and sisters in Christ and we're here to support you. So I want you all to know that, and if you are struggling, know that you're not struggling alone. We're all here with you tonight. Are we all together? And that's what the church is all about. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. God bless you so much for what you are doing. You are such an inspiration to not just your people, but for young people everywhere, and those that aren't so young. So a big round of applause. <laughs> now, we've just had some very serious and sad things we've talked about. Now we move into some hope. And we need to have hope in our lives. So, a quick message, quick word from each of you, a word of hope. Would you like to say something to everyone? Just a word to hope for the future. Marikai. Um, for me, um, I reckon, well, the only thing I can think of is just throw yourself into everything you'll do and know who you are. Um, because if you know who you are, Hope will come, everything will just come, and everything will fall into place. Spot on. Thank you. Tamsin. Um, I would like to say to embrace who you are, embrace your culture, embrace where you're from, because then once you start, then everybody will, and then we'll all live in a happy world together. Spot on. Um, I just want to say, not only to my mob, but to everyone and everyone in this room, whatever journey you are taking and whatever path in life, that is faith. So listen to the Holy Spirit and just believe. I think my message is to not be afraid to say yes. Don't be afraid to ask questions. But if you ask and you receive a yes and you say yes, be ready for God to move within your life um, because he's ready for you. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Hey, guys, 
I think we talked uh, yesterday or the day before about the Holy Spirit can talk to us and move in us through other people and I think the Holy Spirit has spoken to us tonight through these people here. So I hope you feel that as well and I'd like you to thank them. Now we're going to go into something now that is full of hope because that's what we are, we're people of hope. And this is from St. Mary's College in Broome. And it's a presentation. Presentation that is full of hope. Voice, treaty, truth. 